All right, so we're uh, we're here at the Breadfruit Institute on the far side of Maui in Hana. This is a collection of over 200 different cultivars, varieties of breadfruits from throughout the South Pacific. It is the world's biggest and most important breadfruit repository. All right, so we're here at the Breadfruit Institute. Uh, this is Hana, the town on the far side of Maui. It takes about two hours to get to from the main city and hubbub on Maui. Um, surrounding me are the breadfruit trees. Um, and this is where NTBG houses uh, Diane Ragone's collection of breadfruits from, from around the South Pacific. We're going to take a look at some varieties and maybe talk to the caretaker a little bit about them. Um, this is where you go if you want to learn about breadfruit. This is the tree lepet. You can see the large fruits, large inflorescences. So you can see lepet, um, very large, lumpy fruit, one of the largest breadfruits there is. Um, and I'm told they are absolutely delicious, although I've never eaten one personally. Just walking up and down the rows is quite an experience, realizing that these are um, the result of one human, one human's uh, desire to collect and preserve the breadfruit varieties of the Pacific. The monumental effort, truly. Now, breadfruits are a cultigen. They are only found around humans. Uh, this, they have a very interesting history. Uh, going back thousands of years to Papua New Guinea and other areas of, of the uh, South Pacific. Um, they're a mixture of three different species, um, Artocarpius marinensis, Artocarpus camansii, and Artocarpus altiltus. And there are varying degrees of pollination that occur between them. This is a variety called Puao from the Cook Islands. Notice it's a nice uniform round shape and you can tell the ripeness of a breadfruit by uh, how flat the scales are versus how much browning it's got versus how much uh, sap is dripping out the top. They start to wobble and drip sap as they mature. So This is a variety called Puria from Society Islands. It's a little bit smaller fruit, a very tall tree, but it is absolutely loaded with fruit. Uh, Absolutely covered in fruit. This one doesn't have a name, but that's okay. Here's an example of a breadfruit that's ripening. You can see its scales have protruded more or less, less spiky than the immature ones next to it. Uh, the sap is dripping and there's a little bit of brown on it. So this guy would be ready to eat. So this is a type called Mahani from French Polynesia. It is arguably the best flavored breadfruit um, according to the caretaker of the trees here at the Breadfruit Institute. Um, that makes it special indeed. Mahani. So another thing about breadfruits is how easily they sucker. Um, and this is good for propagating uh, known varieties. They will sucker readily from cut stumps um, and just out underneath the trees themselves. And this is often how they are propagated either by suckers um, and sometimes by air layering the branches as well. See these trees are being propagated by air layer. Um, breadfruits are a fairly simple air layer. Uh, they take just a couple months to put out roots, make clones of the mother tree. Now some of the trees are naturally smaller than others and this is the thing about breadfruit is that uh, they can be variable sizes. Uh, some cultivars are large, some cultivars are small. Uh, these smaller ones are more desirable for dooryard trees, obviously. The bigger ones are a little more cumbersome, but uh, yeah, they all make good fruit. These are the male flowers. You can see you tap it, there's some pollen coming off. <laughs> Maybe not as visible, but there yeah, go. there we go. Little puffs of male pollen, um, and that is what pollinates the female flowers. So you can see on this tree, obviously, there's both male and female, seeing as it's bearing a fruit. This is perhaps one of the more curious breadfruits. Uh, collected in the Seychelles. Um, it's called white and they call it that because the fruit is white inside, pure white, snow white. Here's another type with spines. Not sure where this comes from. Here's an example of a spikier fruit. Um, these are often hybrids. 
Now this is my favorite breadfruit variety. It's called Mai Tahid. And I like it because the leaves resemble the fins of a fish. And I think that's very unique among the breadfruits. They're just completely surrounded with breadfruits from all over the world. It's a very cool place.